Hello everybody, welcome to the Impressive channel. Um, today I wanted to talk about something that's very serious and it's about the horrors that are going on in Libya right now as we speak. There are Arab smugglers and invaders capturing African migrants and selling them off as slaves. Yes, this is happening in 2017. One celebrity, Chris Brown, he actually made awareness of it on his Instagram page and it said this, when France got bombed, I see entire Facebook saying, pray for France. When Manchester got bombed, I see the same. When Texas was flooding, everyone was saying, pray for Texas. But this slave trade is currently going on in Libya and we don't see it all over social media. Shake my head. Now this meme has been going around on the internet and it has caught a lot of attention. Even Cardi B actually spoke out about it. I don't understand why they're not making it um they problem a priority. or a priority to help what's going on in Libya. You want to know why they're not making it a priority or you want to know why they haven't tried to uh, help Libya? Because Libya has not had um, a president or have had any type of government running them for a, 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 kind of a long time like right now. Almost two years, right? And nobody cares. You want to know why they don't care? Because it's convenient for them. It's convenient for them because they want free resources. They want they free they want they free um goods. And that's why they don't give a fuck. And you know my channel does focus on urban entertainment and urban celebrities, but I have to use my platform to talk about this as well because the news stations that we have here in America are not giving us any information about what's going on in Libya. I do have to give props to CNN news correspondent Nima for actually bringing awareness of this on mainstream media. We're now in Tripoli and we're starting to get a little bit more of a sense of how this all works. Our contacts are telling us that there are one to two of these auctions every month and that there is one happening in the next few hours. So we're going to head out of town and see if we can get some sort of access to it. The UN's uncovered a disturbing slave trade of migrants in Libya. The International Organization for Migration has taken testimony from Africans who've headed to the country in hope of starting a new life. Some have told of traffickers buying and selling people in garages and car parks for as little as $200. The video has triggered a wave of protests. We're trying to bring attention to what happened in the past and also what's still going on in Africa. And now today, because of what's been happening in Libya, what's only just got out, people are just finding out what's happened. They're realizing that this is still going on and this is an issue we still need to talk about. After spending years detained in Libya, these Cameroonian migrants have tasted freedom for the first time. We were slaves to a whole neighborhood. They didn't ask us whether we were hungry or thirsty. They didn't ask us anything. When we would remove weeds in peanut fields, we worked without getting up. Two people died right in front of me. The captors would hit someone, the person would cry out, and then they would die. According to her, captors are more violent with the darker-skinned migrants. Black skin is a commodity in Libya. We're sold at cheap prices like chickens. I was sold, and I was still pregnant at the time. I was sold. What happened? On my way coming, I was sold. Merciless beating. If you look at most of the people here, if you check their body, you see the mark, they're beating. With electric, even your boot or they took something, something like a sharp object. Understand? Most of them lost their life there. Um, I was there, the, the person who came to buy me, give the man money. They take me out home. If you don't know, Libya has been without resources and they haven't had a government in place for years since the ruler Gaddafi was captured and killed. African migrants and refugees have been trying to cross the Mediterranean waters to get to European countries like Italy and Spain to seek a better life. However, Europeans don't like this at all. It's similar to the way some Americans don't like Mexicans crossing the border. The European Union has a fear of immigrants flooding into their countries and quote unquote contaminating their population. 
They fear the financial responsibilities of taking in more foreigners, and a lot of them are very prejudiced, and they don't like the idea of Europe becoming more diverse. To simply put it, they just don't like Africans. So to reduce the flow of Africans entering Europe, countries like Italy are bribing militants in Libya to keep African refugees from entering their territory. And they don't care if these innocent African people are enslaved, starved to death, pimped out, or slaughtered. They'll continue to pay to keep the Africans away. And this is very sad because the migrants and refugees who have stopped in Libya have been mistreated and sold as slaves to Arabs, and there is no government or any authority in place to stop this from happening. And none of this would have happened if Libya's ruler Gaddafi was not killed by the American government. Now, when Gaddafi was killed, all the weapons that were stored by his military became available for casual usage. Without any authority in place, these militants have been able to get their hands on these weapons and basically terrorize innocent people, which is why so many Africans have been enslaved as we speak. What's going on in Libya is actually similar to how militia groups rose to power in places like Nigeria and Iraq. When the leaders of these nations are killed, the military is left with all of these weapons. And unfortunately, they use it to control people and terrorize people because they're angry. The assassination of Gaddafi was very tragic. Gaddafi was made out to be a total menace to society, but that was unfair propaganda. And I'm not saying he was a sweetheart at all. He was definitely aggressive with his power, but not necessarily oppressive. And there's a difference. He was a revolutionary who wanted to empower Libya. He also believed in the ideology of establishing wealth and power in Africa, and he wanted to dismiss any Western rule or influence. He wanted to raise the level of education in Libya and he even wanted Africa to have its own special currency called the dinar. Imagine if all African countries traded goods using one currency, they could get out of debt and financially thrive in the world and other countries wouldn't take advantage of them. It would be serious competition to other big currencies out there like yen, euro, and the American dollar. Also, Gaddafi used oil money to allot resources and finances to the people of Libya during his reign. Because of him, Libya was one of the most progressive countries in Africa. However, a lot of people did not like him, including one of our American presidents, Ronald Reagan. Now, Ronald Reagan is praised a lot, which I still don't know why, but he did not like Gaddafi because he felt like he was anti-Israel and he was a dangerous troublemaker. This was typical. Unfortunately, imperialist nations like America, Britain, etc. dislike policies and ideologies that differ from theirs. So they try to overthrow leaders and dismantle any government they view as a threat. Crippling the government in the Middle East makes it easier for them to establish influence and control and also gain access to that rich oil supply. Hence why Reagan had it out for Gaddafi. And Reagan actually did bomb and kill Gaddafi's family members because he thought Gaddafi's Libyan military was behind the attack of the US Navy jets. However, this wasn't confirmed. The relationship between Gaddafi and the US was somewhat mended during the Bush administration. George Bush and the Secretary of State Condoleezza Rice were able to establish a peace agreement with Gaddafi. They promised not to forcefully remove him as dictator if he peacefully gave up his weapons of mass destruction. The agreement worked out, but during the Obama administration, Hillary Clinton was ill-advised to turn back on the agreement and have Gaddafi killed. So Hillary basically carried out the work that Ronald Reagan attempted to do in the 80s. Gaddafi's death is the reason why slave auctions are being held in Libya today. Because if he were alive, this would have never happened. Do they have food? Yes. Has Gaddafi used the oil money to build Libya? Yes. Did Gaddafi use oil money and discover water under the Sahara Desert and brought that water to the surface and brought water from Benghazi all the way uh, to the border almost of Tunisia? 
Did he impose farming in the desert so that they could feed their own people? Yes. Are there billions of dollars that he's spending building homes, building apartments for his people? Yes. So something is under this. And so when America, England, France, three imperialist powers want to destabilize that country, is it that you so concerned? Now listen to this hypocrisy, American people. Is it that you're so concerned over the blood? Where were you in Rwanda? Where are you in the Congo? Where, uh, why did you go to Darfur? Because oil is there. No. You don't want to save the Libyan people. That's your noble motive to hide your wicked agenda. This is all very sad, but I did want to give a backstory. Um, I just pray for the people of Libya, and I hope that the United Nations intervene because this right here should not be happening, not in 2017. What are we doing? What's wrong with humanity? Anyway, please comment down below. Um, please like, subscribe, and share if you care. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye.